Hello, today we have John Parkin with us. He's the founder of the EFIT um, courses and series of books. And he's going to talk to us today about his latest book, which is EFIT, Be at Peace with Life Just As It Is. I'm not sure, when is it actually out in the UK, John? Do you? It's out officially on June the 5th. June the 5th. Perfect. Mm. So, welcome, John. Hello. Thank you. Hello. Hi, Claire. Um, I warn you all now that um, I've known John for quite a while, and so he might be slightly cheeky in this interview as opposed to some of our other interviewees. <laughs> Who are more no, respectful, you... aren't they? <laughs> yes. I, I, I am not going to be cheeky today. I'm, gonna, I'm really well behaved. Are you? <clears throat> yeah. There's a, there's a, um, I've set up a little contraption to the, to the side of my desk that will um, hit me with a stick if I'm rude or <laughs> cheeky. Well, I wish I had control of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you have. It's just, it's the, um, it's the escape key on your keyboard. Right, I will just try pre that. Just press that if you need to slap me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let us talk a little bit about this latest book. Um, it's the latest one in your effort series. Yes. Um, how does it, for, for your fans and followers of, of your books, how does this one lead on from the previous books? If Are we allowed to does? say... Um, the full effort. I, I, I don't think YouTube will allow us to say the full effort. Oh, okay. So, um, am I allowed to say F then? Yes. Am I allowed to say it? <laughs> In context. I'm being, yeah. ah, I'm being cheeky already. Aren't Escape. I? I'm Escape. being guffy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's um, um, this, this book, which is, yeah, Be at Peace with life just as it is. Uh, it, it comes from a, an experiment I was doing last year um, with being, being more peaceful. So I, I did a whole range of things, including doing a lot more meditation and doing more exercises uh, around getting calm um, to try and find uh, more peace around some of the stuff that uh, the kind of everyday life stuff. And um, it came out of that, and it, there was quite a few surprises in there as well. So um, for the, in terms of the series of books, well, the books have kind of gone from a, around 10 years ago, which was yeah. um, Effort, The Ultimate Spiritual Way, which is my kind of discovery of the effort thing, um, <laughs> into a kind of deeper, even, <clears throat> uh, with Guy, we did a kind of deeper exploration of this thing, which is more therapeutic, which is Effort Therapy. And then a few years ago, uh, about three years ago, I did um, Effort, Do What You Love, which was more about finding things in your life that you love doing, stopping doing the stuff that you really hate, and, and, uh, and often to do, yeah, quite a bit of around jobs as well. Whereas this has gone, I suppose it's gone back a bit more to the original thing, which is more about just how we are. Yeah. Yeah. It felt that way to me when I read it, I have to say. Yeah, did it? Yeah. Good. Uh, Back to the maybe the original ideas in a way yeah which was really good the structure of the book is based on a sort of game of life if you like in the way that it's based on um so life and peace are a process that are on three sort of levels without yes. giving too much away to the readers but it's sort of you follow through a process don't you so how did you come up with this sort of rather novel approach to this this one well, it's, uh, it's interesting you say novel approach because it is both the approach of a story and really not novel in any way at all. Um, <laughs> because, <Escape>. because it, <laughs> no, it isn't. And I'm being, I'm not being cheeky here because it is, it's the three act structure. Yeah. It's the story structure. And um, even though I've kind of, I didn't intentionally cover up the skeleton of the structure of the book. Um, I, it, it's not obvious in there what these, I mean, it talks about the three levels, as you know, and I don't think there's going to be no spoilers in here and that I can quite, I think we can quite happily talk about some of the stuff in the last act, <laughs> in the last level, the third level, um, because it, it, it's fine to do that. So it is the, the, the structures around the, um, the kind of the classic story structure, which is, you know, from, um, uh, Joseph Campbell's, um, kind of uh, the, the hero's journey and um, the idea I mean I because I've, I've studied story structure because I, I used to write 
fiction and used to write screenplays. So I'm very aware of it. Also got one of our sons who's really into film. So we're constantly, when we watch a film, we're constantly going, here's the end of that one. This is the moment. This is the all is lost moment. We're exactly halfway through the film. And then something happens. We go, have you seen that? What time is it? Oh, yes, it's 20 minutes before the end of the film. So I'm yeah. really aware of this thing. And, and I love the story structure because the idea of, of the classic um, three act thing is it's, it's very kind of, it's archetypal. Yeah. Uh, so it works for a story and that we, we, we then, the story tends to appeal to us as a, as a protagonist who wants something more than anything else mm -hmm. in the world. They kind of want, they go on a, they go from home and they decide to go on a journey and they have a call to the journey and so on. I will talk a bit more about it in a moment if you want, but um, there's that, there's that thing, but it, the reason it's so appealing and the reason it's in everything that we see in terms of stories is that it's, it's, it's us. That's, that's, that's how we are. We want stuff. And we then go on a journey to find it. And then we face challenges. And then we learn things and we become wiser. Then we tend to uh, return home uh, different. And so that's the, the, the structure behind it. And that's what these levels are about, really. It mirrors that. So it kind of mirrors the hero's journey. Yes. And it, and it allowed me to discover something that I don't think I expected at the beginning. Um, which is? Which, <laughs> which is, <laughs> well... Um, um, that I thought it was, a, I thought it was a bit of a journey into peacefulness mm. about how, um, as a kind of, you see, I'm naturally not an effort person. I'm, um, I'm kind of come from generations of, of warriors, not warriors, people who, who people who worry a lot. And, <laughs> and so I, um, I do worry about things and I do get stressed about stuff so effort has been really good for me over the years and all the other things i do in meditation and qigong and things and yoga and things like that yeah. um so i thought I, this is more be, a big journey into being more peaceful in myself and um and uh, it the, i mean it right from the beginning i realized there was something else about it because i think uh, so level one is about as you know, level, level one of this, this thing, which is what most of us go through in our lives is, is I'll be, I'll be peace. I'll be at peace when, yeah. um, or, I'll, and you can, there's lots of other things, you know, when we realize what kind of thing we like, we'd like in life to be yeah. content or to be at peace with ourselves or whatever. I'll be at peace when, so the whole of the first part of the book is that, that, that kind of, I'll be at peace when I get my exams. I'll be at peace when I get my first job. I'll be at peace when I find a partner. I'll be at peace when I've got my house. And, and it's like, I hear this and it's like, oh, it's crazy what we do. It's so crazy, but we it all does, do it. It does progress through life. It is from the exams to when I have, yeah. you know, my health is better at the end. And... It, well, at the end, it's, it's I'll, be, I'll be at peace when I die, actually. Yeah. yeah. So I tell the story right from, yeah, childhood into all the way through life. I'll be at peace when, I've, when I'm retired. Yes, yeah. I'll be at peace when I've sorted this thing out. I'll be at peace when I've on the operation. And yes, I'll be at peace when I'm when I when I'm when I'm dead because, well, yeah. Um, some of us, I suppose, I expect that that so often people are ready and uh, all stressed and they'll feel mm -hmm. at peace. So yes, it's that. That's the level one. And so level two is what I thought this was going to be about. Um, so level two is is the realization. So from going like I'm going to be okay when, which is what we all do. Yeah, <laughs> we much. humans, even enlightened people like us, Claire, um, we <laughs> we still do this thing. I mean, I do it all the time. Still, it's like, oh, I feel better when I'll be okay when. And then you you get it, you get a momentary relief, don't you? It's like, oh, thank goodness that's thank goodness that's resolved. Thank goodness that's sorted out. And then it's the other one then kicks in straight away. Um, and there are uh, moments when you're reading it when I think, oh no. He's spotted me. He's gone. Yeah. <laughs> That's me. Well, yeah. Well, it's, it's awful. I mean, it's awful, isn't it? it yeah. it's, it's dreadful, really. It's awful that we do it, and yet we know we do it. And, I mean, you know from the book that I have the most extreme example of this because I occasionally eat. I'm, allerg I'm very allergic to nuts in particular, nuts and fish. Yeah. In, in the way that they can kill me if I, if I eat enough of them. Seriously allergic. Yeah, seriously allergic. And... Um, so I occasionally have an inadvertent episode, you know, every three or four years, I eat something that um, I'd asked in the restaurant, etc. but it's got nuts in it or fish in it. Mm -hmm. And so I, I then go through, 
I haven't had a, a really serious episode for a long time, but I am enough to go through the thing of starting to get reactions in my body. Um, so it's the start of an anaphylactic shock that could end in me being in hospital and being, as I say, regenerated. I'm, I'm not the bionic man. <laughs> um, resuscitated and, you know, and, and, make, and make, yeah, clearly there's a risk of dying from it. And, uh, but generally speaking, what happens is I go through these symptoms. So bits of, you know, I get lumps on my body. I get, um, I don't really, the, the throat's okay, but I feel sick. I get very bad stomach. I, I feel sick. And these progress over a few hours because it only really hits its peak after about five hours. So I don't know as these, as these symptoms are rising, whether this is going to be the, the big one or whether it's going to kind of rise and then drift back down. It usually does that. I get the symptoms, then it kind of calms down and I have to stay calm. But what I get is this thing. It's like, oh, you know, I'm usually in the middle of some, I don't know, some concern and stress about something, you know, I'm traveling, doing this and that, worried about the talk I've got to do the next day or whatever yeah. it is. And then I get this kind of moment of like, oh my goodness, I could die. <laughs> and so I go, oh, what have I been? And it's that thing, because I'm so, I'm, it's that perspective moment. It's like, what have I been worrying about? Yes. You know, why am I concerned? I'm like, what a great life I have. I mean, why yeah. am I concerned about that? What am I doing? It's like, oh, and it's like, I do a little pact with my, it's like, like the pact you do with God. Yeah. Given that it's, I'm not talking to God, but it's a pact with myself and my life, which is, Oh, if I get through this, if I if I'm alive tomorrow, I will just remember this. I I'll just realise. Sorry. I promise. Yeah, I prom. I promise just to kind of rec keep things in perspective and enjoy everything as it is, and not worry about all this stuff I worry about. Mm. Because really, and I I recognise that even if there's some serious stuff going on, I realise that it's relatively small yeah. compared to the big things and compared to me shuffling off this shuffling off this mortal coil. So <laughs> I do this thing. And invariably, three hours later, I realize I'm okay. And, um, uh, and I kind of go, oh, and I, and I have a beautiful period of relief yes. and relaxation and kind of, oh, this is, this is one. I want a beautiful message. What a beautiful lesson I've had today. Uh, it's just wonderful. And I just feel great. And I'm in love with everything and everyone and, and life. As How it long is. does it last? Well, it, it lasts anywhere between an hour and a, a maybe, I don't know, a couple of days. That's quite a serious thing to go through for just an hour. <laughs> it's it. <laughs> well, there's, there's little remnants of it that can, a little ripples of it that go. But generally speaking, I will then start to worry about something mm. else. And, um, and things kick in. It's a, it's a little bit like when you've done something really good. And, so, and you know, you kind of, you congratulate, you know, you kind of, oh, wow, wow, it's fantastic. Finally achieved, finally got the, and mm. I'm kind of, I enjoy it for about five minutes, then I'm bang on to the next thing. What's next? Yeah, because the chapter on success, that re did really resonate with did me. I mean, how long do you yeah. How long do you celebrate it for? How long are you happy with it for? Yeah. Um, so that's we quite interesting. We should, sit, we should sit in that for a long time, shouldn't yeah. we, and, and, then, and enjoy it. But, but we don't because we're kind of, maybe it's an evolution thing, but we're, we seem to be programmed and built to kind of keep going. <laughs> keep going yeah. yeah. It's interesting what you say about the worry because it seemed to me that although the book is ostensibly about finding peace, yeah. largely the, the central tenet of it is about worrying or caring less. Yes, it is. It is. And that's, um, that's the kind of into the level three thing really, isn't it? Um, uh, it, it is. And that's, the, that's why it works so well with effort. Because the the unique thing about effort, um, as we've been exploring it since well, 2004, so a long time really, is that it has this um, inherent thing in it about uh, when you say effort to something, you're implicitly saying that that thing is ma is mattering. It's too heavy for me. It's mattering too much, and you're implicitly implicitly saying, in the end, it doesn't matter so much. So it's that perspective moment, isn't it, when you say effort? And it's, I think it's quite unique in the language. I mean, it has the, the kind of um, the neuroscientists and various scientists have showed how, how the F word has an effect on the body and the mind. And even that we say, we say a swear word from a different part of the brain. 
normal language comes from the left hemisphere and when we swear it comes from the right hemisphere which we could, I could talk for ages about that because i love it but yeah. um but it's it's it has an effect this the um saying the f word any swear words actually uh, but saying effort in particular has that thing of it's my it's my having had the uh allergy scare it's that in a little bit every time so if yeah. i'm and it's a great kind of it's like um it's like i don't know what the word is it's like a balancing mechanism so as as i start to feel the pain from some stress some worry about something uh and then i say effort it, it i kind of come in like that and it kind of then brings it down and then it starts i'm trying it's back to front on this video so i'm struggling to know which arm is mine i can't I'll do zap you. I, won't, I won't do an exercise like this again because it's almost impossible to tell what i'm doing <laughs> do you see yeah it's very difficult. put your left arm up yeah that's right to you though isn't it it is yeah it yeah. is i thought you were gonna get the wrong one then you're clever <laughs> i'm ahead of you parkin <laughs> you <are. laughs> i had to um i had to read the book quite quickly in order to to read it before we did our interview so maybe i didn't you know maybe this comment is unfair but i it seemed to me that um some of the ideas in this book are quite paradoxical yes and you really have to i had to reread some things do you, get it? Do you think it is your most complex book yet? No, I think it's actually the simplest book. The simplest, so it's me. And it's the most paradoxical. No, you're absolutely right. It's not unfair at all. I think it's a key point of the whole thing. Mm. Um, and uh, it's simplest in that uh, uh, once you get it, it's really easy and really obvious, <clears throat> like most big messages and big ideas. Um, but if you don't get it, it's really, <laughs> really difficult. And I, and I tell you what, I, shall I explain a little bit why I think it, it, yes, why it's like this and why, why I think it's, it is, why well, you're right that it's paradoxical. Um, and what I do in the book is I talk about uh, two hands, don't I? On the one hand, you are. But I can't do this because every time I put a hand up, it freaks me out because it's the wrong hand. <laughs> I'll do it for you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah. When you put your left on your left hand, <laughs> um, well, it, uh, just to kind of go over the, the structure again. So level one, which is act one, um, and I talk about the acts as well. So level one is I'll be at peace when I'll, I'll be okay when, um, which in a which in a which in a, fil a story. Let's call it a story. But I, I like films. So any film that I see, it's like this. The first act, the first twenty minutes, is about being at home. Uh, and going through the normal stuff and realizing that things aren't right. You're not happy or you want this more. Da, da. And so you, there's a call to a journey. So you go on a journey and the journey in this, which is level two, is the journey, the inner journey. So I realize that I'm constantly putting off my own happiness or being at peace. And so the realization for level two is, um, is amazing, which is I can be at peace now. I can be peaceful now. And... Um, that's what act two is. That's when you go on a journey you, and then you face challenges, but you go on a journey. And the, the first part of the second act in a, in a film, which is the, from about 20 minutes, half an hour to halfway through the film is usually quite a nice time. The characters mm -hmm. left home, they're on a journey. It's quite, it's, it's sweet. They've got adventures. It's good. They've got friends. They've got allies. There's new things. It's new, new stuff. Um, and the, and, and that in the book is about, I'm basically teaching people how to relax, aren't I? And how yes. to be peaceful. And yeah. I talk about the ways that I use And I found a couple of, well, one in particular, a really powerful way to meditate, which really works for me and has worked for quite a lot of people now that I've taught it to. And I talk about things like gratitude for being more peaceful. So these things work for making yeah. you calmer and more peaceful. And I use them every day. Um, but you get to a point halfway through a film and halfway through a story, which is actually halfway through that second level, mm. when, um, when you say, um, um, I'm at peace now, but then there's always something that brings me out of it. That's when the um, menacing music comes in. It is, yeah. It, it is, and it is, it's, it's a nasty moment. It's a big mm. challenge, and it's, a, you know, it's, it's something that's hard to get over for the main character and it's hard to get over for us you know i feel really peaceful and then i get a big bill in I, and i feel really peaceful then i get a diagnosis for you know i get a symptom for something yeah. and they really take you out it's like how can i be at peace how can i be peaceful when there's this thing and so the the journey through that second level is like trying to stay calm or to be calm after and keeping going 
yeah. and not just going back to your old life, which is, oh, that's what it's like. And I'll be uh, at least when I'm, when I'm better, I'll go back to level one, basically, yeah. which in a film, which in a story you could do. I mean, they don't do because they want to finish the film. But a lot of people in life, when they get when they do the journey and the inner journey, they will get catapulted back to level one. So there's people that go away on their journey, but then end up back in their ordinary life. Mm. You might, I mean, you must know, Claire, it's like lots of people who embark on a spiritual journey or in a journey, a therapeutic journey, get freaked out at a certain point yeah, and kind of you. pull back a bit to kind of, oh, well, you know, I tried that, but this, yeah. this is life. This is my life. Yes. Um, so anyway. Nothing um, works for me. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Mm. So there's, um, and the spirit for most people, this kind of spiritual journey is, is the level two that I'm talking about. It's, it's the attempt to stay calm. It's the attempt to be at peace. It's the, it's ba- this is the dualistic model. It's the, there's, there's the kind of stressed me and there's the peaceful me and there's the bad world and there's the good world. There's the, mm. there's the not me and there's the, you know, the spiritual me. This, this is the, where we separate everything. Mm. <clears throat> and um, most religions do it, most philosophers do it, and most of us do it, even if we're really spiritual and really into the stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, most yoga teachers want to be, you know, like this all the time and happy and, um, and peaceful. Um, um, but there is, there is the level three for a reason, and there's the act three in a book for a reason, because at the end of act two in a story or in a film, which is about, uh, well, the biggest challenge comes about 20 minutes to half an hour before the end of the film. And they have to overcome them. It's, and it's called the all is lost moment in a story. And it's usually set in a confined space, like in a cave, um, uh, like where you're very trapped. And it looks like you're going to die or you're not going to get what you want. Mm-hmm. And this, this exists in almost every story there is. And, mm-hmm. and then the, ca- the character has to come out of this in order they have to survive and get over it in order to get through to the end. Yeah. Um, and then the last part of any story, usually, is in some way going home. You kind of go back to the Shire in the Lord of the Rings. You know, start in the say, Shire, you go on a journey, you go back to the Shire. Lord so of the Rings has been playing through my head the whole time. Has it? It's interesting, it's interesting you say it, because I, I just taught at the weekend and I wanted to use the Lord of the Rings as the story because I get the feeling this would really work to talk about it. It's yeah. just that I don't like Lord of the Rings. Mm-hmm. And so I have to get over that thing watch it again and, and then use it as an example because it's an example that most people would know I think yeah and it's the most obvious analogy those those key moments are very obvious in Lord it's of the Rings it's true and it's a it's a good versus evil story as well so that would be good for the second level uh, and I don't I actually can't tell you how it works in Lord of the Rings for the last act for the mm-hmm. last part of the film but generally speaking most protagonists in a story will end up going back home to ordinary life to life as it was, but changed. Okay, and the because way that there have to be some sort of redemptive quality to this third act. There, there has to be something in them. Um, usually, the fact that they've understood something not about their want, because their want was to be, you know, to be to find the girl or boy or to or to to whatever they do with the ring to put the ring in Mordor, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, but they have to then understand the need underneath. Finally that they hadn't understood at the beginning um, uh, that is different from the desire in, in act one and act two. Right. Um, so yes, it's usually redemptive quality. It's an understanding that they get it through a ghost. It's called a ghost, a character that, or, or episode that allows them to understand a need rather than a desire and a deep need. And, um, but so yeah, we're going back in, in, in act three and the third level to ordinary life. And so the point of the, of level three, is 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 that it's life uh, level two is kind of oh i imagine if i meditate enough i'm going to be it'll be like a kind of monk and i'm really i'm going to get calmer and more peaceful i'll be really sweet to people i won't be as stressed i won't be angry that's the kind of dualistic thing of level two uh that i still have i still want to be a nice person uh <laughs> but, but uh, i'm generally i'm a nice person as you yeah. know but in, in, in level three the the idea is um after going through the there's always something and still going through the fact that I'd like to be calmer today, level three is about this, really. Um, it's life as, as it is, which is its ups and its downs, and me as I am, which is me being nice and me being not so nice, and me being stressed and me being and calm, 
that's that's life as it is but the new knowledge the bit i've taken from this the journey that i've gone on is that actually the the at peace bit doesn't mean just being at peace now because i'm calm it means being at peace with the whole lot so it's like a bigger feeling um which is which to me i I don't know i don't really want to talk much about enlightenment but that to me is enlightenment it's um and it's always, oh, it's a God view of this. The, the idea that an all accepting quality, um, and it, you know, most religions and spiritualism and philosophies talk about this, this, this same thing at the, when they're good, <laughs> this, this deep acceptance of it. And I, acceptance is a hard thing to talk about. And, um, we might get into trouble if we talk about it too much. Um, but, um, but this is what the level three is about, what acceptance is really about. And acceptance for me in this is at peace. Uh, and excuse the sounds in the background because I'm in an office. Okay. Um, I, we need to be at peace with that. Yes. <laughs> yes, yeah, so really, a lot of people in their, on their spiritual journey will be aiming for level two. Yeah. Not necessarily realizing that this level three is available to all of us. That's right. And it's, I think... I don't know. I mean, sometimes I think mainly we have to go through it chronologically. Yeah. Uh, I do think we have to go through some of the search. I mean, it's, um, and, and I say chronologically and then completely out of order in the, even when we realize that everything can be okay as it is, that I can be okay as I am in level three. So when we get those moments of insight, mm. if, that, if that feels true to people, it certainly feels true to me. We still then move around. So I am in the level one a lot which is, well, I'll be fine when. Um, yeah. And I'm in level two a lot, which is, I feel calmer. And that's where our paradox pops up, isn't it? The paradox is, um, on the one hand, ah, <laughs> on the one hand, um, of course, I'd like to be a more mature person. I'd like to be a nicer person. I'd like to be a, a calmer person. Of course, I'd like to be, I don't know, thinner (laughs) a a variety of things i'd like to be and it's a great thing to do the things that get me to that so i need to eat less food in order to be thinner and i need to 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 practice in order to be calmer and that's natural that's that is Mm. that's level one to level two level two that's great and i'm not going to stop that stuff and i don't think i should either however if i'm entirely in this it's quite painful because it's always a process of movement into it and movement out of it. And a, also a kind of stress around it. If there's always, if there's a gap often between where I am and where I'd like to be, that is tension. That's tension. Yes. Yeah. And, and you can, you can, you can calm that tension by trying to get there. So me losing some weight or being calmer um, by closing the gap in other words, but, but the gap closes and then it opens again all the time. It's like a kind of concertina yeah. effect. So, um, so the other hand, hey, the other hand is this, which is how, how can ever, everything is fine as it is. Everything's okay. I don't need to change a thing. You don't need to no. change a thing. We're beautiful as we are. Every part of me is beautiful, not just the bits that other people think are beautiful or I think are beautiful, I accept, but every single part of me. And actually life's fine as it is in every part, not just the bits I like and that I approve no. of. And, and that, of course, is kind of appears to be paradoxical. It has to be. Because on, in life, there's lots of bits I don't like mm. and I want to change and I don't like what, you know, Trump has been doing here and there or they've been doing here and I don't like the way that it's going and the government. Mm. And you go on like that, don't you? I want to change it. I want that to be different. I want me to be different. I want to be calmer. Uh-huh. And it's quite oh, 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 like that. And then you calm down and you accept a little bit, but then it comes back in again. Mm. Well, this is different. Paradoxical, different but they can exist at the same time. Yes. As, um, and the last thing I'll say about this thing here, which is, you know, kind of accepting everything's okay, is that there's a part of our brain, um, there's a part of our brain that's sensing this all the time. Hmm. And no matter how mad we're going about not accepting and not enjoying and being scared and worried and everything that we are, there's a part of our brain that all the time is in touch with this truth that everything is fine as it is, I think. So when you get it, I, I believe I have on occasion had it, but fleetingly, it's a sort of recognition. It's not as though it's a, a revelation. It's a recognition that this is how it can be. 
That's right. Well, it's it's a recognition that this is how it is. I how think, it is actually, yeah. and the great. I mean, you. I'm sure, Claire, you're being. Uh, I, I'm sure you have it a lot. This sense, and the great thing is, this is what I like about it. It's not that if we just go back to wanting that sense, that's kind of level two. Yes. And this is the kind of slightly difficult thing to get, I think. That what, what appears after, if, oh, well, hopefully after you've read the book, but when, if, when we understand this thing about level three, what's great is we can be in the other stuff, but there's still a kind of gentle awareness that that's there all the time. There's a kind of background thing. And, I, and, I, and the, what helps me with this uh, and also to explain it is to explain that there really is a part of the brain that's doing that all the time. And that's uh, Jill Bolt, Jill Bolt Taylor and the uh, stroke of insight, her, her, her work and her book are really good for understanding that she was the, the neuroscientist who had a stroke and she discovered that there is this part of the brain of her brain that's immensely at peace and connected and okay and it's there all the time and all we do with the other stuff is cover it up yeah so all we have to do is calm down the other stuff and that appears but then but then again we're shifting a little bit back to level two because we're trying to get that sense of peace mm. but it's there all the time that's the that's the thing and that to me is immensely um immensely reassuring yeah well i found i found the book immensely comforting actually yeah good slightly challenging I yes. had to kind of read and reread. And I think part of that was because I was trying to do it in a condensed time. Yes. Um, I'd like to have had more time and I will go back to it and read it again at, yeah. at leisure. Um, well, I'm, I'm, glad you, I'm glad you felt that sense of comfort. And I, I actually do it myself. I mean, I, I, it's not that I go around reading my own books. But I do. <laughs> well, they're really good. In the, in the, yeah, they are good, but I still don't tend to read them. But, if they, but I have to, because of the process of, of writing and then editing and then yeah. checking. And then even, you know, if I, if I do an interview or something, I will look at it. So that process is, I find exactly the same thing. It puts me back in touch with that sense of, the comforting thing yeah which is and it's just the reminder this is this is what these they're a reminder but what what i hope that we get to uh understanding that third part of it the third level is that um this lovely thing that when we're when we're out of it when we're out of the awareness that everything's okay when we're in the um when we're in the either level one level two which is the i'll be okay when or Oh, I feel so calm. Ah, <laughs> thing. It's all the same. It, yeah. This is this is the idea. It's all the same. So it's the same if I'm stressed as it is if I'm relaxed. It's the same if I'm nasty as it if as if I'm kind. And that that's the embracing of the thing. And the, the best way for me to understand it as well, um, for people, I think people to understand it is imagining an ideal parent or ideal parenting. And I'm, I'm sure we're both very good parents, Claire, but um, we're probably not ideal all of the time. <laughs> um, and an ideal parent um, um, loves unconditionally uh, and accepts the whole thing. And you, so I imagine the bits of me that, that uh, are whatever they are that one might not normally like, uh, stressed and kind, worrying, um, nasty, uh, whatever thoughts I might have. I imagine how a, an ideal parent would be with a, a small child thinking those things or doing those things, being, you know, aggressive or angry or stressed mm. or whatever it is. And you just want to hold them and say, it's okay. And that's, so that's the sense for me of this thing. It's all, which is, it's all embracing and it's a kind of it's okay it's okay as it is um and that's how people sometimes have a, a view of a benign god i think that's how a lot of uh, i know christians more than any other religion i suppose yeah. might have the you know a sense of jesus or god kind of holding them and um, embracing them and, and things are all right there's then all this funny stuff around sin um but even in even in christianity they, there is stuff around kind of um forgiveness in advance you're kind of forgiven in advance for all the stuff that you might do which is kind of getting there to a similar area yeah uh, well i think I, one thing i should get across to the readers because it sounds like you know 
I encourage you to read this book. It's, you will get a great deal from it. I'm making it sound like it's a hard read. It really isn't. It's very humorous. There's a lot of you in it. There's a lot of humor in there. Um, so I think you'll enjoy it. And um, although there's this um, paradoxical thing, themes in there, when you get it, it really is worthwhile. And it, it is very simple, as you say. Thank you. Are you, are you pleased with the book, John? I am, and I, I, I am in that I, and, and I think you're right. I, I think it's easy to read in that it's a light read, and I, I keep, I'll, I'll keep you entertained as you read it. Yes, very and, much. And, 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 yeah, giggling, even when I'm talking about very serious things. Um, and, but it is, of course, uh, and if, just to go back to the journey, uh, the, the protagonist has to leave home and go on a journey that can be sweet at times, but it's not always easy. Um, and it faces its challenges. And to go to the last level, the last act, they have to, they have to face a time when they think all is lost, when they could die. <laughs> now, you're not gonna, there's not a potential for people to die whilst reading the book, to get to the end <laughs> of the book. not that boring. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> um, but this is clearly challenging mm. to really get to the heart of this. And I love the thing that it is, and I've heard a lot of um, teachers and gurus over the years talk about a similar thing. That, that when, when the kind of the understanding, when you get those moments of understanding, and we all do, enlightenment isn't from one thing to a, a state that lasts forever. Enlightenment is moments where, you, where things are clear, yeah. where there's moments of kind of, oh, I see, yeah, I see it. And it can be really everyday, the kind of real basic everyday stuff. Yeah. Um, that, 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 that can be, that thing is really easy. And suddenly you kind of go, oh, God, what? it's like that. Oh, wow. So then it's easy, it's simple, and, it, and it's just going to happen. It's gonna, and I talk about this in the book, don't I, where it, this, could, this thing, the understanding happens in the, can happen in many different ways. You can be sitting around one day and then you, it's clearer. Uh, or you can go through it chronologically and do lots of practice and then kind of finally realize. Um, but um, yes, I, I, the, the main thing for me is to kind of to, to, to keep people... Uh, entertained or at least feeling the lightness of it because in the end this is a, a beautiful comforting and light-hearted message i mean it's incredible really i mean it's uh, right and this comes back from the, you know the julian of norwich who's the christian mystic uh, uh, the first uh, writer of female writer in the english language they think who said uh however she said it all all should be well all will be well and all should be well and all should well that's the message she had from being very very sick she came back from nearly dying. Her greatest insight was, it's fine as it is. Everything's fine. And then everything's fine as it is. It's fine. And then she says it again. It's fine. <laughs> That's what she wanted to say. And it's, it's kind of what I want to say. Not, not just to people, but to myself all the time. That's that, and that's the comforting message. It's, it's fine. It's okay. It's going to work out. It's fine. It's just beautiful. It's not as fine. It's beautiful as it is. The, even the messy stuff. It's it's lovely. It's beautiful. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> and there's a, so there is that part of our brain doing it all the time, and we can start to say it all the time. But then I'm still going to forget it. Oh my God! Today I'm going to do that. <laughs> what if that happens? What if this happens? And it talks like that in that voice as well. It's fine. <laughs> and that's fine too. Yeah, that is. So, that's, it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> so the book. Fuck. F it. <laughs> Be at peace with life just as it is. Yeah. Out beginning of June in the UK. And uh, still doing the courses, still doing the weekends. We are. We're doing, we do some weekends in the UK and uh, London and Brighton. Got one Excellent. in Brighton in August. And we do retreats in, in Italy, uh, mm -hmm. five or six, seven a year. Uh, in lovely places here and by the way I've got normal glasses on here because I'm looking out at sunshine it looks like I've got sunglasses on but you're just so maybe... rock and roll yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite sunny outside <laughs> okay well John thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today really enjoyed our chat um, the book is is great I encourage people to go and read it and uh, thank you very much thank you so much Claire it's been lovely to talk and uh, I hope, hope the readers listeners enjoy the uh, enjoy the book thank you thank you